We're going to take a look at the traceroute command now, both on a PC and a Cisco router. And primarily, you're going to use this as a troubleshooting command, and we are going to get more into the nuts and bolts of traceroute later, and we'll be using that with ping and some other labs. But right now, I want to show you how, can, how you can also test your load balancing with it, and also just introduce you to the command if this is a new one to you. And first, what I'll do, though, is actually run one here on a PC, and I'm going to run a trace RT. Now watch this on your exam. I, I can't imagine they're going to ask about the Windows command, but this may be one you're used to, and it's very similar to the output of trace route. So I want to show you both of these. Trace RT is on a Windows machine, and trace route, the full word, is, uh, is on a Cisco device. So let's do a trace RT here, and I'm just going to do it to YouTube.com. And what you'll see here, first off, you're going to get some quick returns here. And notice that next to the number, I'll probably, it's going to move as I do this, so it might get tripped up here, but you've got three timers there. What a trace route does is it sends three probes out at the very beginning, and usually what you'll get in return, and this is a little off screen here, is one IP. You can see the 50 there, and then 207.95.145. And the first couple of these are in Richmond, Virginia, which is where I am. And it looks like we were starting to have, there's an Ashburn, Virginia, so we're starting to get a little bit closer. But along with these names, you also see the IP addresses. And where Trace RT and Traceroute both come in handy is when you are trying to locate where the problem is, because that's again where that limitation with ping comes in. Because you got point A, point B, you're trying to ping point B, and you get five timeouts back. Well, that really doesn't help at all. <laughs> you know, that's just saying, okay, you, you don't have any connectivity. But of course, in our labs, we don't have a lot of routers between our other routers. But, you know, between me and YouTube, there could be, you know, 15 or 20 routers. And if I'm actually trying to do some troubleshooting and find out why, you know, Staples Mill Road, Virginia, Comcast.net can't get to YouTube, I could use Traceroute to see how far we're actually getting. So if I start seeing a lot of timeouts at this point, it's like, okay, 209.85, 251, 243 was the IP address of the last device that we could actually get to. So we'll see a trace complete there. That's fine. And that's it. I really just wanted to show you that to kind of familiarize you with that. And also, it's going to look a lot like what we're about to see on our Cisco device, just not as many IP addresses. But again, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it a little bit more later. Uh, along with ping. But I want to show you that now because this is a great way to test your load balancing. Because you'll notice, of course, when we sent the trace route out, you know, we got one IP address on each line, excuse me, the trace RT. There I go. But you can see, you know, the exact path. And then once we got past the numbers, you know, here's the seventh device, here's the eighth, here's the ninth, here's the tenth, etc. And right before we got to the end here, we got a request timed out, which is not uncommon. It's just when you keep getting these asterisks that you need to say, okay, you know, that's as far as we're going to get. So let's go ahead and do a trace route on 4444 from router 1 and see exactly how the packets are getting there or those probes that we send out. And that should pretty much be it. Yeah, so there's the route, and we expect it to be pretty short. And notice, though, with line one, we have three addresses. Or rather, we have two addresses, but two of them are listed twice. Excuse me, one of them is listed twice, one of them is listed once. And then the second one is just 23.4, which is that Ethernet interface down on router four. So what's going on with those first three numbers? Well, the first three IP addresses. Well, that's how you know load balancing is working because that means the first trace route probe was sent to 123.2, the second one to 123.3, and then the third one to 123.2 again. And then when they returned that value, that's why you see three IP addresses there. You're only going to see that if you have some kind of load balancing going on. Otherwise, you would just see one address per line. But anytime you see this, it's a real tip-off that your load balancing is working. Now, if you wanted to send more probes, you know, you could look at that and say, okay, that's 66, 34, or 67, 33, however you want to say it. Two of them went to router two, one of them went to router three. Let's put it that way. Let's say that you wanted to send a certain number of probes. Then you could use what we call extended trace route. And you just enter the traceroute command and then hit enter. 
and then it's going to ask you for the protocol IP. We'll take that. Anytime Cisco prompts you for information and there's an entry in a bracket like this, if you hit enter, you're accepting that default. And the target IP address is 4444. Source address, we're going to keep that at the default. We're not going to change that. Numeric display, no. Timeout, we'll keep them three seconds apart. I'm going to send 10 probes out. And I'm going to take the defaults for everything else. And there we go. And then all of a sudden, we've got, you know, 10 entries there. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the trace route route there because we're at 120, excuse me, at 23.4, we know the path. So what you would see there is 32 msec show up five times and then five probe timeouts when you get at the end because we sent 10 probes. But you can see the first one, you know, it's 23232323233. And that means indeed that your load sharing is working correctly. Now, about that type escape sequence to abort, what about that? What do you think that is? That phrase seems familiar. Yeah, it's the same one as with ping. It's control shift six, control shift six. And let me show you why this comes in handy. Um, let me just trace route something that doesn't exist here and we'll see what we get. Can I even do that? Is it just gonna come back real quick? Okay. Here's the deal. So you trace route something and you put an IP address in there that can't be traced or you just entered the wrong one and you realize after one address it's going to start timing out and you say, oh man, you know, I wish I hadn't done that. Well, what you're really going to wish is that you knew what that escape sequence was because now you're going to get 30 soul sucking rows of asterisks. And there's nothing worse, not that this happened to me, but there's nothing worse than having someone looking over your shoulder when you do that, you don't know what the escape sequence is, and the guy behind you finally asks, is it supposed to be doing that? <laughs> um, yes, that did happen to me a long time ago. I think that was like my second week on the job or something. I don't know. But we all know what the escape sequence is now, and it is Control-Shift-6, Control-Shift-6, and as soon as I entered that, it returns you to the prompt. So, um, or you could just tell the person behind you, hey, it's none of your business. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. So, that's a great introduction to Traceroute. I have a feeling we'll be using it in some of our other labs as well. But again, it's primarily used for troubleshooting, but as you've seen, it's a great way to test your load sharing out as well. So, what do we got coming up next? I know, I know, I know a question that you had from a previous video. I know it. And we're going to ask that question at the beginning of the next video, and then I'll answer it for you. That's coming up next.